How's it going guys? So I don't typically do commentary videos, but I'm going to do one today because I wanted to talk about um, what, in, for me, what was the hardest thing to learn when I was learning Blender. And it actually has nothing to do with the program itself and it has to do with technique. Um, and if you get good at this technique, it, it very well can separate you from being a beginner to being a professional. Um, you know, there's things like lighting, there's things like composition, um, texture, but what I'm talking about is how you deal with the background of your subject. Whatever your subject being, being usually for me, it's like an abstract model or a character, anything like that. One of the biggest struggles for me was how, what, do, what do I do with that background? Because I did not like uh, a single color flat background or typically it would just be like a black background. What am I gonna do? You know, my character is standing on something, my model is sitting on a surface, but what's gonna go in the background? Um, what I used to do is I would make a particle system and then just have a bunch of like emissive objects and then get up the field, ooh, we got bokeh. Um, that ended up being really distracting. And I think when you, you're having trouble with the background, for me at least, I can't speak for everyone, my issue was I would make very distracting backgrounds. So in this video, I kinda wanted to show you some of the techniques that I use while I'm designing to get my backgrounds to look good, but not distracting, but make it work with the design. Um, so if you struggle with like dealing with what's gonna be in the background of my subject, this video is for you and um, let's, let's get it going. So I'm just gonna make myself right up here. <laughs> you can see the OBS, all right. So we're going to start with the the easiest one and probably the most used one, which is an infinite background. And for me, there are two types of infinite backgrounds. There's a single plane and a two plane infinite background. So I'm going to start with the single plane. Uh, so we're going to go to my renderings here. So if you are going to use a black background, it, it, it can work. In my opinion, if you're going to do a back, black background, something needs to fade into black. For me, this infinite background, I mean the infinite floor, fades into the black. Um, but if you were to do something like this, I'm gonna go to my render, and then let's just go ahead and make this, it's gonna look like a, like a collectible figure. Um, if you do this, that's no good, I don't, that, that, that's what I mean by infinite background. You can see the right here, and this looks bad. This looks very beginner. But just by simply extending the floor far beyond where the light is hitting it can really help it. But again, black background. So what I do uh, quite a lot if we are working with this type of lighting situation is have some volume. Volume is going to make it interesting. If you are working with like an HDR with like a daylight, it's not going to work. I just have two um, spotlights hitting the sides and an area light hitting the top. So we're gonna go to slot number two. This is with volume. And so what's happening is you have something going on in your background with the light up here with your two lights. So it's not a pure black. Um, it actually looks really, really good with some volume. So it adds some character to your scene. It actually adds some, some emotion to it makes it look more interesting. That is a really hacky, easy way to do it. Now the other way is the second type of infinite background. So I'll show you how to make that. I've done it about a billion times here on the channel, but it is another way to deal with your background. So the way you're gonna do it is you would just have a face here and then you would go to edit mode by hitting tab. And then I'm gonna take here, I'm gonna get this guy, I'm gonna hit E for extrude and Z, right? And actually, if we look at my wallpaper, I did that right here. This is a design I made today. And I made, this is not an infinite background. This is just a background where I had a flat wall floor. And the way I kind of dealt with that, I made it a different color. This was more into the artistic side. This is less of what I'm talking about. But this does kind of show what I'm talking about. But in this case, we are talking about an infinite background. So you would get a bevel. And then you would take this bevel do that, boom. And then what's gonna happen is if you use soft lighting, this is gonna this is gonna go right into that. You won't see 
the curve because it's gonna look infinite. That is how I've done that about 100, 100 times. So for example, I did it here on this design. This is on my Instagram where you can see the floor and this is actually an infinite background, but we just have this soft, oh, my cat wants to come sit with me. Um, you can see how that floor has this soft look and then just as some added detail, I thought it was boring, still having that infinite background. So what I did was I added something simple. I made sure that that model in this background, this little grid was the same color as the wallpaper. I mean, as the background. So it still isn't distracting, but it adds a little bit of detail, really taking this kind of to another level in terms of it looking nice, looking interesting, rather than just being like a um, um, this kind of shader ball to display the shader with the background. So that was kind of what I did once I made an infinite background to make it easy to look at. And then I added this grid to add a little bit more visual interest, but still it's not distracting. We still have this as our focal point for our subject. All right, so you may remember this from the cloth animation satisfying tutorial. Um, this design here. Now, what was interesting about this one is these cubes. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove them. Can I? Yeah, right here. So initially my design was I had just a plain, um, pl so initially in my design, I used a plane as the background. So if I can go ahead and add that and show you the original idea. So in this design here, this was it. This is where I was gonna stop it. Um, didn't like it. I didn't like how boring this was. This was boring, it was, there wasn't much going on. It's like, oh, maybe I can add a vignette on the edges to add some kind of shading potentially. But to me, it didn't look that professional. It didn't look that like I was intentional. It just looked like I had added a white background because that was the only option. So what I wanted to do was still take that idea of having a white background, but add something interesting. And in this case, I added these massive cubes in the background. So it's just simple, right? So it's not distracting, but it's interesting enough. And if it was still distracting, I could go ahead and add depth of field to kind of minimize the fact that someone could potentially be looking at that, right? Um, but see, now it's a little more, more blurry, but still it's a white background with something interesting happening. So there's still some visual interest. It still makes it interesting to look at. And that's kind of how I handled the background of this design as opposed to keeping it, hey, hey, my cat is attacking my mouse string. So I'm, I'm editing right now. And it only occurred to me after the fact that the irony of a cat attacking a mouse I don't know if that's funny to you, but that's hilarious to me. All right, <laughs> back to the video. Um, as opposed to just keeping it plain and boring and um, white, and there's kind of an option. You, um, another option I could have done is massive sphere, so it's actually um, easy to look at. And so that is an option. All right, so I wanted to showcase this design here. This you may recognize from a tutorial as well. Um, and the issue, is it this one? Yeah, so my issue was the background. I wanted there to be a sky in the background or so I don't even think it was sky. I just wanted something in the background. I didn't want it to be pure black because again, I don't like to make decisions based on what's not working. Um, for me, I didn't want it just to be black because, oh, that's what works. And I mean, it would work because kind of this fades into that, all that fun stuff. And this isn't bad, right? But this is a thousand times better. Um, so I didn't wanna just stop there because, oh, the background is black, it works because there's some volume. I wanted to add more detail. I wanted it to look more interesting. And I believe I saw an on running ad. Let's see if I can find it. So I saw this um, from Future Deluxe, really cool studio. They were doing, see that gradient right there? I was super, super inspired by that and I wanted to do it. And I thought that can work here, I think. And it did. And all this is, is a gradient with an emission on it. Um, completely changes the whole vibe and it really does kind of look like um, kind of an otherworldly sunset or sunrise. Uh, and that was sort of my 
solution to the problem, and then there is a reason there's depth of field, being this. It just kind of looks like it stops. So to distract you from the fact that it does stop, I blurred it. And depth of field always kind of adds some realism. So it worked and added some volume. And here we are at our final product. And that is kind of the, the way I kind of dealt with the background. And again, the goal is for it to not be distracting. So it was simple gradient, depth of field. Made it interesting, but not distracting. And that's the biggest part. That's kind of the bigger takeaway for a lot of these. Interesting, but not distracting. Now, another common solution that I have is just go orthographic. Um, again, another random abstract piece. So we have this floor, but I wanted the camera to be able to capture the details going above here. And what was happening is when I had it in perspective in my camera here, if you don't know how to do orthographic, click on your camera, click the green camera icon and you go to perspective. So this is perspective. This is what you normally have by default, but see how you kind of have this issue. And I also, it also kind of makes a better view on the model too. But if we go here to orthographic, you're getting all this detail and you're not losing this. See, so I'd have to make the plane bigger. And then again, that's me making decision based on what's, what a problem is. And so if we go here to the orthographic view, boom, way better, everything's better. Um, and then what happens is if we go here to the render, we have volume, we have a lot of crazy stuff happening. But now we can just focus on the model. Now we can just focus on the line. We don't have to worry about, okay, how's our background handling everything? Because we just have a simple, really dark floor. And that's gonna work better for this specific design. These these issues, these ways I'm solving the background problem are very specific to each design, which is kind of why I'm showing you a lot of them to kind of get your gears turning on how you can handle that on your own specific problems. And so this is how I dealt with that on this one. Orthographic I use quite a bit when I'm like, oh God, I, I don't know what to do with my background. I have a, this really cool model, this really cool subject. Let's try orthographic. I kind of have, I had this joke with, um, it was when in doubt, just go orthographic. And it works and it's really cool. Orthographic is kind of an underused thing. It's kind of um, underrated when working with this. If you're working with models, it'll probably like make your model. I mean, if you're working with characters, maybe not, maybe don't do it with characters, but with stuff like this, morphing the way it looks is okay because it's already weird. So that's kind of how I dealt with that by going orthographic. If you're dealing with motion graphics, Orthographic is an awesome way to kind of help your design, especially how your design works with the background. Now for this one, even though it's not like a subject and a camera looking at a subject, there's still a background element to this. And that would be this. So if I go ahead and I turn off volume, this is what we're dealing with. It looks horrible. <laughs> Simply said, it looks horrible. And it's like, oh, let's try like a sky HDRI. Possibly in my experience, that doesn't work, especially with these infinite loop um, designs that I do a lot. Having a sky or having a plain color is not the option because it just doesn't look that great. So my second joke, when in doubt, just use volume because volume with these kind of like sci-fi abstract things, it really is a perfect solution. There's always gonna be another solution I prefer volume, that's what I like to look at. Um, so if we go ahead and add that volume, there we go. And then we have our lights, which are our point lights. So we added a point light here, point light here. So basically a point light in each cylinder. Um, and that's how we solve that problem. If you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know we do this all the time. And it's a simple solution to the problem of what is going on in our background and it adds a gradient in a sense. So you're adding interesting, so it's bright right here, darker right here, that's a gradient. Um, and it really, really helps with that problem of what are we doing with our background? Let's add some volume, add some lights and see what happens. And this is kind of how I've dealt with that for, for years. And then the last solution to the problem is just completely avoid the background. Um, again, specific to the design. This is another tutorial I did. In this case, as I was designing, I went orthographic and I zoomed all the way in on this design and then just forgot about the background because we didn't need to do it with this design. If you can, like if you're working with a piece of motion graphics like this one, um, 
just zoom in and see what happens. Um, this, in this case, I didn't even have to concern myself with the background because I could just zoom in, enjoy the animation, and not have to deal with, is there something coming through the cracks? Are we using perspective camera instead of orthographic camera? Now we gotta deal with that. Um, just completely avoid it altogether and see what happens. Um, but with that being said, those are a couple of the ways I've dealt with my background. There are dozens and dozens of ways. In fact, I encourage you, if you wanna go in the comments and put all the ways you've dealt with the backgrounds or if you have any criticisms of the way I deal with my backgrounds, put them in the comments. I encourage that. So if you are beginning in design and you're trying to figure out how to do your design, I hope this helps you out. Um, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.